Yeah, so obviously it's a unique injury, um, especially for – I mean, I say unique. I say unique as in, like, a baseball sense. Like, for pitchers, they typically – you know, most time you when you hear, like, forearm injuries, you're hearing flexor. For me, it was an extensor. So a lot of times, like like you've been hearing or reading, it's it's like a tennis elbow type thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I had some various off-season changes. Um, I started kind of doing a, a, a weighted ball program. Um, maybe it could – there's so, so many things that it could be attested to it. I don't know if it was a certain lift or maybe it, it could have been dehydration during that bullpen that day. I normally drink a lot of water. We had physicals the day before. You weren't, we weren't allowed to drink for 12 hours. I mean, it could have been anything, really, if you want to pinpoint something. Um, but I think it, some of the – you know, just the workload for me, um, being a young guy, you kind of learn uh, that – you're you're kind of going through as you go through off seasons you kind of work you have, you're trying to figure out what works for you so for me um you really don't know what works for you unless you kind of experience it so uh, I kind of started my, throwing my bullpens and stuff earlier this year because obviously I was coming in competing for a job so I wanted to come in ready that like almost wanted to come in as if it was a mid-season um and you know I, I think um maybe going into my first bullpen I was kind of letting it go a little bit too much and um, like I said, it's just a maturing process and kind of learning what works and what, what doesn't work. But uh, thankfully, um, you know, I was, you know, obviously the day when when I threw my first bullpen after the pen, you know, I was worried uh, that it was going to be maybe more something more significant um, with just the lack of range of motion and stuff that I had. Um, but thankfully, I'm thinking I was thinking the Lord every single moment, you know, that when I got the MRI, everything was so clean on the uh, structurally. Um, and you know, it was best case scenario type stuff. So I feel, I feel really, really good right now. Um, I'm kind of taking it day by day, uh, with the process of it. Obviously it's kind of unique with, you know, how the prognosis works out and how, when, when, when to start throwing and stuff like that. But I do know that I feel really good and I'm feeling better every single day. And I'm thankful that it, it's, it's just a minor thing. I should be back soon. Thank you. Brendan, do you have any follow-ups? I had to take your hands down because it was loud in the background. Nope. Uh, we'll go next to Pete Calvera. Hey Clark, uh, how, how early did you start? How early did you start throwing those uh, bullpens this off season, and, and and how did you feel early in that process? Yeah, um, I felt so. I, I felt amazing. I think this was probably the best best I felt coming into a camp, um, as far as an arm standpoint goes and, and body standpoint. Um, I probably started throwing maybe December, um, when typically, you know, I would start throwing in January. I probably had 12 bullpens before I came in, uh, into camp. Um, and my velo has been up a ton. I, you know, typically in a bullpen for me, I've never been able to get over like 92, 94, just cause there's no adrenaline and stuff like that. But in my bull, I think that's another thing to attest this to is my, my velo was up in all these bullpens. I was 95, 97, 96, um, so my, my stuff was better than it's been playing in bullpens. And I think that, you know, that could have led into it a little bit, just being, you know, just a little bit of a slight velo jump and, and being a little bit more twitchy. Um, obviously things can be more susceptible after that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey, Clark. You, you said this is basically best case scenario mm -hmm. for you. Did you think it was your UCL when you first felt it? Yeah, so I didn't. I knew it wasn't my UCL because I knew it was on the other side of my arm, and and like it was just. I just knew it was unique. I knew. Uh, so I threw that bullpen that day. Um, like my velo was up a ton. Uh, I felt really good, and then like halfway through the pin, it just didn't seem right. It wasn't coming out the same. Um, and then like later on in that day, it just kind of like, started stiffening up on me. And, and then by the end of the day, it was like super tight. I had no range of motion and I was just like, what? Cause it was all up in here. And I was like, I just didn't know. I've just never experienced it before. So, um, I ended up calling Timmy and then the, when I came in the next morning, I still had no range of motion. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know. I, I it was kind of like over the bone around the bone area. So I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. So, it, I, you know, as a as a pitcher, as an athlete, you kind of just think worst case scenario when you're kind of going through that stuff. You kind of start to think about the what ifs, and and you're just sitting there when you're laying down at night, and your brain just starts starts running a little bit. And um, but thankfully, after the MRI, Doc kind of put everything rest assured, and um, I was I was very very thankful that it was kind of best case scenario in a minor situation. And to know for me to know that I still be able to to get to get you know I'm going to be able to log a, a significant amount of innings this year. 
uh, and, and, you know, be able to contribute a lot. And so to be able to still do that with a minor injury, I was very thankful for. How frustrated are you considering all the hard work you put in and your desire to be a part of that opening day roster? Yeah, it's, uh, it was definitely a blow. It was, it was very frustrating for me. Um, like you said, I think this, I, I'm, uh, this was one of those off seasons where I put in more work than I've ever had before. Um, and it, it definitely was a big blow. I think that, um, you know, for me, I, I have to trust and lean on my faith. Uh, and kind of, it was, it was definitely a blow, but you know, like I said, I'm thankful that it's a minor injury and that I'll be back soon. Um, but it was one of those things where it's just another mountain to climb and it's kind of, you know, it's all a part of the, it's all a part of this game when you're young and stuff, you have your adversities and your ups and your downs. And, um, so it's all a learning process for me. I'm in a really good headspace right now. Uh, thankfully I'm with a really good training staff and, and these guys surrounding me, they're, they're really, really good with what they do. And I'm already feeling tremendously better. So I think it's one of those things where it's kind of, you got to take the way with the good with the bad and, and, and kind of just keep on moving forward. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Christy hey, Clark, I'm just curious. Um, you said you made some changes this winter and your VLO was jumping up. Mm -hmm. Was that the, the goal of the changes to get the VLO up? Um, so I, in, I implemented like, so I've done weighted balls in the past, but not like, I, I didn't do them recent in the recent years after I had Tommy John in 2017. Um, I kind of got off the weighted balls and then as, as it's, you know, as it's kind of growing in the game, I wanted to, there's some things mechanically that I wanted to clean up. And I thought, you know, I figured with the weighted balls and the Yankees and, you know, as we talked through the stuff, we figured, you know, the weighted balls might help clean up some arm path stuff. And, um, I really wanted to clean up my, my goal was to clean up my mechanics with my lower half mechanics. And, um, a lot of that could, you know, with the drills that I was doing with the weighted balls, the walk-ins, the wind-ups, and a lot of those drills, it really helped clean that up. Uh, and another thing it was kind of doing was kind of cleaning, you know, I, in previous years, I had a longer arm path. Um, so with the weighted balls, it kind of helps shorten up your arm path uh, and kind of helps clean up some of that stuff. And it, it honestly, as far as that goes, it, it did help me. Um, I, as mechanically, I was feeling in sync and stuff like that. So uh, the goals that I had this off season, I reached because of those weighted balls. So um, it wasn't like I was trying to do a velo program or, or, or gain velocity. Um, I think that was just, you know, an offhand of it. I ended up gaining velocity. I don't know if that was could be attested to that, but I think another thing was throwing earlier. My arm just was in shape from the season, um, and it just kind of rolled over into the next year. And then I think, you know, gaining some strength and putting some good weight on and, and stuff like that can also be attested to the velo jump. Well, so uh, did you – what changes will you make now going forward to prevent this? Are, are, yeah. Are weighted balls out, or what will you do? Yeah, I think um, – that's a good question. You know, that's another thing, you know, you know, when you kind of experience stuff like this, it's a maturing process because you get to learn and pick and choose things that work for you and don't work for you. And thankfully, you know, I could have had a big, you know, it could have been a lot worse and it could have been attested to weighted balls. It could have not been attested to weighted balls. So it's one of those things where, um, you know, I think maybe I'm going to do it in a more controlled environment, maybe as far as like, you know, not trying to do pull downs or certain exercises where I'm just, you know, uh, max level. Um, maybe stuff that, that can, you know, walk in drills and certain drills that help me stay on top of the ball uh, can lead to, you know, continuing to clean up my mechanics while also not kind of, you know, using too much effort level to where I'm fatiguing in the season or, uh, or inj muscle injuries like this pop up. And so another thing is, you know, I want to be smart with this because it's a muscle injury. So, um, you know, muscle injuries, are, you know, you know how hamstrings are and stuff like that. I mean, it can linger around and you can have setbacks. So I really want to be smart in this rehab process and kind of make, make sure I'm staying on top of all my stuff to where I don't have to deal with this again in the season. That's the goal. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next one from Dan Martin. Hey, Clark, uh, the changes that you were just talking about, were they all made under the auspices of the Yankees, or did you, did you do some of this on your own or with your own trainer uh, yeah. during the offseason? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I wasn't, I didn't spend my time in Tampa in the offseason. I wanted to try to get down here, but with the COVID restrictions, I couldn't get down here. Um, but I was in com constant communication with the Yankees. Um, Sam Breen and, and Matt and all those guys were, were great with that. Um, Sam, Sam and I were working on stuff that we, we were, we had stuff and cues that we were working on in the, at the alternate site last year, whether that be like lower half mechanics pulling off the ball or, um, some of the upper, upper body stuff was like arm path and stuff like that. And, you know, I figured that, uh, with the weighted ball and they figured with the weighted ball program, this stuff would help contribute to cleaning that up. 
Um, so everything was in conjunction with the Yankees. I didn't really go out and, you know, have a, a separate trainer or try to do something that wasn't under their jurisdic- jurisdiction. And uh, they didn't ha- they, they knew everything that I was doing. So we were in constant communication. Um, and so it was just kind of one of those things where this injury is kind of, you know, it, I kind of attested to so many different things. But uh, maybe coming into camp and, and letting it go a little bit too much in the first bullpen and kind of having that maturing process and, you know, you like I said, you learn from this stuff, and thankfully I'm young, and thankfully it's a minor thing, and, and you know, I'll be back soon. And when uh, we talked to Aaron about this, when he first mentioned it, mm-hmm. uh, he said you would not pick up a ball for three to four weeks. Is that still the timeline? Yeah, I w- you know, the time, it's a fluid timeline. It's a day-by-day thing. I know that, you know, a lot of the things that we said early on for me to, and requirement for me to throw is, uh, you know, get that range of motion back, which I have complete range of motion and be pain-free, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty much pain-free right now. Um, so they were, I mean, obviously they were surprised by how quickly I was responding to whether it was the meds or just the the treatment and, uh, the stuff that they were putting in. And so I know that I'm feeling really good, but I know it's a, it's a, it's, you know, these guys kind of got to home me in. Thankfully I have these guys, I'm trying to get back out there as quick as possible. Um, so yeah, I think the three, four week timeline is around there. Um, I know that I'm ready to go and, and and I kind of, I think that I'll hit that mark around the three weeks somewhere around there.